present your presence. Make us whole. Command the veils to come off. Command demonic veils to come down. My places to be destroyed and burned. We destroy the altars of Baal. We destroy the altars of LORD. We destroy the altars of GRAC. We destroy the altars of GLORY. We destroy these pagan altars. the Father. We prayed, we prayed, we worship, and His presence is in the house today, and we thank the Father for His presence and the Word, and everybody that's here, that's here by a divine appointment, we appreciate you here. Today, you're going to hear a message today that we're broadcasting to go out in the stream, till the Father's revealing things to us, and I had this message prepared, and I shared it some pieces and we're going to begin this message and it's going to be a message that's going to stir your spirit you're never going to be the same again either you're going to be you're going to you're going to be the same or you're never going to be the same again these are levels we go through like i tell people everywhere i go is that when we first come to the knowledge of the Mashiach, we receive Him as our, our Messiah and get grafted in through His blood. And then when we come to Revelation, we want to be uh, emerged. We hear the Word, and the Word builds up the uh, Amana to act on that Word, and then you get water immersed. And then when you hear about other things, you get uh, Amana to walk in that. So it's different levels. You just keep pressing in. But it's like my prayer is for us... If some of you have been watching us and following us, and some people have left because they can't handle it, they don't, want to, they don't want the transition change to go all the way, I pray from the depths of my spirit, when I pray in my closet prayer, I say, Father, let us 
catch up where we're supposed to be from years ago that we did not know. Uh, like, you know, I want to catch up since I was a little boy and push me into the dimension you want me to us to be and then turn around and give it to the others. And it's up to them to catch up because if you don't, you just turn around and stop in an escalator moving. You just stop. And you're walking trying to fight it backwards and you look at another person on the other side, you're going to end up somewhere else. You can trip, get dizzy, things can happen. You have to keep your focus in Yahuwah and your focus in Yahushua and your focus in the Word. And you got to get your focus to, to get your Word. And, and, and I know even the Hallelujah Scriptures, which is a great Scriptures, and the, the research Scriptures are great Scriptures, but there's still stuff there that we're learning. And we're just going ahead and covering those words and speaking the right language in Hebrew. And it's okay, okay? Look at your neighbor and say, it's okay. But you got to learn the words because we're realizing that it, it is principality. It is no more. We went from the level of that we thought they were titles to we realize now they're not titles. They are principalities. They're struggles that have an image. If anything that has an image, an idol, a matching picture to it, it's demons. Okay? Get that through your head. If it has an image and an idol, it is demon and demonology. Okay? And that's where the mysteries of principalities and powers come from. It was we found in Ephesians 3, 4, 21 and 6, 10 through 18. In this, by this pulpit. For I tremble with, with, uh, with uh, not only excitement, but uh, reverence and respect for the honor to be able to come here and share. And share it on a stream to many people. And through DVDs and CDs to let people know this information because it is vital information. Look at your neighbor and say, we're not alone. There's many out there. I found more people out there doing the same, the same thing. They are urgency, emergency, blasting and letting people know we are not alone in this fight of our amunah, of our, of our belief and our understanding. Because when that anointing comes upon the earth and use us mightily, it's not he's not gonna these people that think they're they're half they're compromising, they're they're using different words, and they're praising the Father in their healings in the name of other deities. He does not mix. He said we're supposed to cast those things off like ministration rags, like something filthy. Something that's gross. We throw it off. No more idols. No more images. No more pagan stuff. We're done for it. We're a new generation. If my fathers did it, that's them. I'm correcting it from this moment forward. A new generation to rise up. The spirit of Eliyahu to rise up in us. That's the anointing for the last days. It's not one particular person. It's going to be millions of people of of Yahushua are going to rise up with that anointing in the last days. Can I get somebody to say, I mean. Hallelujah. He wants true worship, in, not in spiritu, in the land word. He wants it in ruha and truth. He wants it in ruha in truth. I know we were babies. We spoke baby language. We spoke the language of baby language of a goo gaga spirit, the goo gaga hollow, the goo gaga grace, the goo Those are pagan words, and they came out of our mouth. It was baby language. But the father's saying, "Grown up, and I'm going to use you now." It's a free will. We're free moral agents. We're free moral agents. You can stay in the middle. You can stay in the back. You can go back to the Cretan mentality. Have your ears tickle. That's what they're doing today. They're tickling ears. They they ran out of their so-called prophet line. They can't even prophet line no more. They're finding stuff for two years ago and trying to speak it back out. They can't even. They can't give fresh revelation no more. It's gone from them. Fresh revelation. They're mimicking each other desperately, mimicking each other. So it sounds like it's a fresh revelation, but no, it is mimicking one another through telecast, through TV, through radio and videos. They're mimicking. There's nobody speaking fresh. But the Father's going to use us to speak fresh revelation. And it doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, He'll use us in this hour. Can I get a mean from somebody? Now we're going to play a game. Okay, we're going to play a game, and, and I want you to really, I, I did this already once, but I'm shortening the message, because of, uh, and the Father told me to change the titles repeatedly, and send it out there this way. A lot of people are going to get the same message, with the same title, okay? So, the title of this message is, the HGS, who is it? Where did it come from? Okay, what's the origin of it? 
So we're going to look at some things. We're going to have some fun. I'm going to go through it quickly because of time. Did you know there's 505 times in the Scriptures the word Spirit is there? With a capital S or a small cap. Okay? So we're going to have some fun here. They are unclean spirits. 24 times. There are unclean spirits with an S. Another 20 times. So 44 times there's unclean spirits. Would you ask for an unclean spirit to get into you? But there's people out there that do that. There's people out there that ask for those spirits. Are, are you hearing me? One way or another, they're entertaining those spirits. Okay? How about a lying spirit? Second Kings or Melachim Bet, chapter 22, verse 22. Okay? Lying spirits. Would you ask for a lying spirit to come into you and fill you up with love, lying love? There's people out there. There's people out there that do rituals and do things to have a con man lying spirit. There's men that train in the stock market to have a good lying tongue. They're selling Mona V with a good lying tongue. They're selling all kinds of products and other pyramid schemes with lying, lying tongues. And they get around other people that are good liars so they can learn the technique. So they can make money. Okay? If you want to look up uh, unclean spirit, there's one verse, Exodus 6 9. I'm only going to give you one or two verses, even though they're 20, 30 times each. Okay? How about an anguish spirit? There's an anguish spirit out there. Would you ask for an anguish spirit? No way. Shimon, Exodus 6 9. How about a foul spirit? Foul! Ooh. Somebody opens the, the door after the toilet and you walk in. All right? I cast demons out. When the people burped, it was foul. It like it came out both ways. When you cast the demons out, it is a foul spirit. Okay? And his cousin's unclean. <laughs> and that's Mark 9.25. What about a familiar spirit? Leviticus 20.27. Way it 20.27. Would you ask for a familiar spirit? I don't think you would. Because we know better. But did you know there's people out there, they're getting on the psychic land, they're now giving you lessons, you slide your credit card and they give you lessons over the phone, how to be a good palm reader, how to be a psychic, and pick up a familiar spirit. That's what that is, a familiar spirit. If you girls are playing around with Esquire and looking at the astrologies in the back, or any book, a puzzle game, and you're looking at astrology, you are entertaining a familiar spirit. It's the catechism course of witchcraft. You got that? And that is found in Leviticus 20, 27. How about a falsehood spirit? Falsehood. Some people are good, man. They think they're not lying, but they tell half-truths, cover-ups, or partial information. Do you know all three are lies? That's a, false, that's a falsehood spirit. Spirit of falsehood. If you give half the information, it's a false. You're, you're giving, it's a lie in the eyes of Yahuwah. Micaiah 2, 7. How about a dumb Mute spirit. Mark 9, 17. People are dumb. They're mute. They're mute. Would you ask for one? I don't think so. How about a deaf and dumb? 9, 25 of Marcos. How about a spirit of jealousy? Numbers 5, 14 and verse 30. You don't have to write it down, honey. You live with me. I'll give it to you. <laughs> I'll make you a copy, baby. Okay, so... There's people that entertain the spirit of jealousy and continue to be jealousy. And out of jealousy is deceit and craft and cunning. And you might not be saying, I want a jealousy spirit, jealousy spirit come into me. You might not be saying that. But if you entertain something so long, it's going to come in. Are you hearing me? The spirits don't enter in unless you open your vessel to it. Demons won't even go to a sinner and possess them unless they have an open gateway. And let me share that with you. I remember as a little boy, demons attacking me in my house as a little boy. And I said, I'm not as scared of you. Get away. I command you to leave in the name of whatever. And I flipped out five names, including a couple saints. Okay? I, and it left. Why? Because, not because I was using a magic trick of names. It's because I closed my vessel. I didn't want it to come in. Are, are you hearing me? Alright. So how about, how about a wounded spirit? Proverbs, Michelle, 18.14. There's people that have a wounded spirit in their lives. 
And then they end up attracting other people with wounded spirits. And they sit there drinking tea and talking about their wounds and rehearsing the curse. And they get more wounds. And they open up because they're open up with the spirit. And then other spirits come in from their friends because they're entertaining wounded spirits. The same spirit attracts the same spirit. You got that? If you stop at a light, if you're a man or you're a woman, and a woman has a lesbian spirit or a homosexual man has a homosexual spirit, they look at your eye. And if you look in the eye to them and they look back, they know that you're gay or potential gay or potential lesbian. They know that they know that they know. Are you hearing me? Because the same spirit of them recognizes with them that you both are kindred. Now, if I'm walking down the store and I've seen Ali Dan, and I looked at him, I said, Ooh, brothers, the follow of Yahuwah, I know it. I can, not just because I see the ZZs, because I guess look at his eyes, and we got a kindred. Then he's going to walk towards me, and I'm going to walk towards him. Same thing with Ananiah. If we don't know each other. I did this with strangers before in the streets. I walked to them, they walked to me, hey, shalom, hey, shalom. You know what I mean? Because it's a kinder spirit. We know that we have, we're grafted in some way. Are you hearing me? And the same thing in the spirit realm. Spirits attract spirits. Okay? How about an evil spirit? You want an evil spirit? You want to ask for one? I don't think anybody's going to want one. But there's people that entertain them. I know people that have entertained them. And that's Sophitim or Judges, chapter 9, 23. Especially in 1 Samuel 16, 15. How about a spirit of infirmity? You want a spirit of infirmity? There's spirits of infirmity. There's spirits of infirmity out there. It's attracted to sicknesses and diseases. It's a spirit of infirmity. That spirit of infirmity, when you people got sicknesses, they like to get around other people with sickness, and they, yeah, well, I'm taking this medicine, I'm taking that, and they all got infirmity, and then they pretty soon they got four people drinking tea, talking about their infirmities and their medication level. Instead of divorcing that infirmity. Are you hearing me? Spirits are attracting other spirits. How about a sorrowful spirit? 1 Samuel 1.15. An anti-Messiah spirit. I don't care if they're evolutionists. I don't care if they're a rebel. If they're a sinner in the form of in the gay community, or they're a sinner in robbing banks, or they're a sinner in stealing, or they're a sinner in drug addiction. If they say, "Well, you know what? It's okay." They have their own religion. They form their own religion and philosophy, and they can have an anti-Messiah spirit because they refuse to receive them. Okay, and that's in Yohanan Aleph. Chapter 4, verse 3. How about a hiding spirit? Hiding. I'm going to do what I want to do. This is what it is. This isn't going to be. Blah, blah, blah. Real hiding. Proverbs, Michelle, 16, 18. Prideful spirit. There's people with pride. People like that spirit. We used to pump each other up in the garage and the gang. We'll pass out guns. They say, you, 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 we're going to go out there and shoot them down. We're going to blow them up. Yeah, we're tough. We're the kings of the neighborhood. We control West L.A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, it's a fill of pride. <coughs> you can see them going down the road in L.A. And they look at you. And they practice at it. They look in the mirror and they exercise the possession of the Spirit. And they look in the mirror and give, the, give themselves hardcore looks. Are you hearing me? <laughs> practice the look to be mean right <laughs> and I was just a teddy bear <laughs> alright how about a whoredom spirit spirit of whoredom would you ask for a spirit of whoredom to come in oh but there's people out there do that there's people that pimp there's people that are male prostitutes female prostitutes there's people that sell themselves in business Oh, dude, just sell. Get the check. Write it out. Just get that signature sign for that building. Whatever you got to do. That's a whoredom spirit. When you got to lie, deceive, and do everything you can to get that signature. Are you hearing me, somebody? Hosea 5.4. How about a broken spirit? There's people that got a broken spirit. Proverbs 17.22. Heaviness spirit. Yeshiyahu 61.3. A slumber spirit. Romans 11.8. A worldly spirit. Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 12. And that is Aleph. How about a devil demon spirit? Luke 4 1. There's people that are attracted to these spirits. They even get in corners and light candles and ask for them to possess them. Well, let me share something with you. 
Did you know that the word holy and spirit is used in all the cults the same? The only belief system that doesn't use it is the house of Israel. We, don't, we use Ruach Kadosh. We don't use those words. In witchcraft they call it hollow. They call their priest of Satan priest. We call them goans. Are you hearing me? We have different words, a different language, a different frequency of sound. They, they call Lucifer L-O-R-D. They say my L-O-R-D and then they say Lucifer. You go, to, you go to India, they have their L-O-Ds for all their deities. That's a, that's a universal paganistic Baal worship word. Are you hearing me? Those are common words. But in Hebrew, it has a language of itself. It has a protocol word of itself. Don't go out of this line. And don't even call. Don't even mention their names. Don't even call their names. Don't seek them. Don't go to foreign lands and dig up artifacts and go home and put it on your stella. And that's my little goddess of glory. I dug it up and down there in Greece. I brought it home with me. It's a real idol. <laughs> and they bring it over their home and put it on a pedestal in a box. Some image from ancient days. They dug up from the ground. It should have been broken and smashed completely. Those are pagan deities. Somebody said, okay, ouch. Would you thank Yahuwah? Would you say thank you for Yahuwah? You prayed, He answered your prayer, or you got a healing in your body. Would you thank Him in any of those spirits? Would you say thank you and say L-O-R-D? And here we won't, but there's people who will. Would you thank Him and say Baal, which is L-O-R-D? People do it. Would you thank Him in the name of a G-O-D? Would you thank Him in the name of a name? Shem is okay, it's a character. But if I rock around calling my wife, hey name, hey check it out name, would you go give me something to eat, eat name? She'll slap me, what's wrong with you? My name is, I'm your wife, call me honey once in a while, or I love you. And don't call me name. And that's what the Messianics are going around. Shem, 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 Shem. Why would you just say a Shem? Why would you say his name and the characteristics? Why we're going around just say It's a good understanding. But we can't call him name all the time. We can say in the name of. Are you hearing me? But people are doing that. They're zipping their lips because Satan has zipped their lips. He doesn't want people to proclaim the real language and the real word. And we're going to be the ones that are going to rise up in these last days and proclaim and declare his name. Gotta get a praise shout. Hallelujah. Woo! Go to Math Matthew Yahoo chapter twelve. Matthew Yahoo. And we're gonna go to chapter twelve, verse uh, thirty six. Thank you for enter playing with me with this. Just think of it, five hundred and five times. Those are just a few of the ones, and there are other times they're used for good wives. They're using I mean excuse me, Tove understand. Like a spirit of a human, or the, and you can say spirit for a human being, but you can't say it for Yahuwah, because he is not a humanoid spirit. Are you hearing me? This is what you're going to learn today: the difference from the word uh, spirit, ghost, and hollow. All right. So Matthew twelve thirty six, twelve thirty six, and it says this: and I say to you that every idle word men speak, they shall give an account of it in the day of. Bima, or the day of judgment. Okay? For by your words you shall be declared righteous, and, and by your words you shall declare unright. Or in other words, in the King Imus version and others, by your words you'll be berakah. They use the word blessed, but that's a curse word. And, you, and, and then by your words you're going to be baruch, or cursed. One or the other. Your words are going to take your ship. Your tongue, it says in, Je in Yaakov, is like, a, is like a rudder in a boat. Your words will take you this way or that way. Your own words. And now it's every word spoken against you. Well, stop putting that stuff on Facebook and making words spoken against you. Hello? Because you can put words, you can type things, and it's not every word spoken out of mouth, it's every word written. That's why when we go pray for people in the hospital, I look at the chart, I say, they tell me what the problem is, I pray for them, I say, every word spoken against you, and every word written on the chart against you, ascribed against you, proclaimed against you, with that infirmity. Are you hearing me? It's not only spoken, it's written. So stop writing stuff. You'll never you'll, you'll, you'll grow up and get married. You'll hate that you did that. 
Because it doesn't go away with that Facebook CIA program. Are you hearing me? They're going to put that there for life. It's like I went on the internet I'm trying to get rid of the, the, the Bob Childs from, from the dinosaur park. It is stuck there. I wanted to throw, destroy it, rip it out. It's all in there. All the history of that stuff. You know what I mean? You can't change it. So I think the Father would give me a new name, Eliyahu. <laughs> you know what I mean? Give me a way out. Right? So here it is. How was the way out of Abraham? He became an Abraham. How was the way out of the grabber, Jacob? He became Israel. How was the way of Hosea? And he became Joshua, Yeshua. How was their way out? The Father would give them a new name. And that was their way out from their past into the future. And when you look at the future, Abraham, you could tell how many times he made mistakes and he kept using the Abram name. And the father rebuked him every time he went back to the, the temple, the high mountain, and do it again. Sacrifice again. I have a covenant with you. I'll make you as the sands of the BC shore. And he just goes right out the altar and speaks Abram. And the father said, Your name is Abraham. Circumcise your flesh. Get right. And then he got a point once he got that knife out and circumcised the flesh. He got rid of the old man. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Then he come to his senses. He needed to change his name and get rid of that past through a blood sacrifice. Like, unclean thing, get out of here. Are you hearing me? I don't want it no more. I want that past. It's over. I am a Abraham, a, a, a father of many nations. And that's what we have to do. We've got to come to that place in Yahuwah that we cast those things aside. Verse 36, and it says this, and I say, every idle word of man speak, they should give account of it in the day of Bema. Did it say it's covered in the blood? Did it say it's covered by the G girl? No, it's Bema. This is where we go, everybody. This is not the white throne judgment. This is the judgment seat of the Messiah. Because he's talking about us. Okay, every idle word you speak. They don't have videos no more. They have DVDs, high digital now. <laughs> All right? It will be recorded. Now you're washed in the blood and forgiven. Right? And the Father knows when we're casting those things. That's what brother was preaching the other day about repent. Repent is you go back to the place that you made the wrong turn. You get your berries out and you cast that stuff far from you. You throw it away. No, I don't want to go there no more. I'm done with that sin. You're casting it out. It's like you go through your house and you're just cleaning it. Like when I came out of prison and I went through my clothes, I just got rid of it. I, could, I was starting to take it to the Salvation Army. He said, you don't take those unclean clothes to the Salvation Army. They are spotted by the flesh of sin. You burn it. You rip it. You don't want somebody to go pay $5 and put that leather coat on and he's got the visions of unclean spirits. You destroy it. You cast it off. You, you, you eliminate it. And then you change your style. Because you see, when you get right, you're going to change your style. We don't look the same no more. We don't dress the same no more. We're different. Can I get a Yahuwah? Praise Him. All right. Let's go to Yaakov, James. How many are getting the picture here? We're not going to call on foreign spirits no more. We're not going to play those games. Chapter 3, verse 8. It says this. But no man, chapter 3, verse 8, no man is able to tame the tongue and is unruly evil filled with deadly poison. With it we baruch our Elohim and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the likeness of Elohim. Out of the same mouth proceed baruch, berakah, and curses. My brothers, this should not be so. He said, we should not have a double stand. We should not be, we don't, we don't, we don't supposed to say, get healed, or Father answers our prayer, He helps pay our bill that week, and then we're going to say, oh, thank you, L-O-R-D, oh, thank you, G-O-D, I give you all the praise, and I give you the G-L-O-R-Y. He will not tolerate no more, because why? Because we're grown up. That's why our music got to change. We got to correct those words. If we don't correct those words, we're going to be singing praise to those pagan deities. Okay? we got to investigate every word. We're, because see, once you burn a CD and burn music, it's out there. You hear me? It is out there. There's CDs and, and DVDs of Chuck and I that are out there. Somebody's probably listened to it and thought we're great Crittons. 
You know what I mean? And we're calling on the angelicos. We're calling on the G-girls. We're calling all the pagan stuff. And they think we're still the same because it, it leaves a blemish on us. So we got to go back and correct every single thing. That's why we had a point of repentance, correction, and then move forward. If you believe that you're grafted in, and I say this for the people watching my stream and listening, I want you to go to, for the people on the stream, I really want you to go to Matthew 15, 24, and chapter 10, 5, and 8. Our Messiah said He came for the house of Israel. Out of His own mouth in your red letter edition. If He came in for the house of Israel, that means you've got to be grafted in to enter Shammai. If you want to go to heaven, that Greek Elysian fields, that Greek place where the pagan deities dwell, you go head on. Because heaven is not a Hebrew word and a, and a place for us of Israel. If you don't want to go to New Jerusalem, you want to go up to the clouds with those deities, you keep claiming that. You don't understand what we're saying out of your mouth. You've got to learn what you're saying. And the new covenant of Israel, there's a covenant, a new covenant, that's for Israel in Hebrews 8, 8, 10. There's no difference between the, 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 the stranger, the goy, and the Yehudi, Romans 10, 12, and 13. We're rooted and grafted in Him, Romans 11, Romeim, 11, 1 through 10, and 11 through 31. How about a renewed covenant? By, for the house of Israel. Only. The renewed covenant is not for the Cretan. The renewed covenant is for the house of Israel. So you've got to get in the car of Israel. you got to get into the other denominations. It doesn't have a place in Shamari. And that's Hebrews 8, 16 through 13. If you're watching my stream or listening to video. How about chapter 10, 14 through 18? How about both fellow citizens? Ephesians 2, 11, 22. Co-heirs united. No more aliens. No more walking around with a, uh, an immigration car. A forged green car. We are in the house of Israel. We're citizens of Israel. We're through the blood of the Messiah. And that's Ephesians chapter 3, 1 through 8. We are, we are Abraham's seed. The only way you be Abraham's seed, he's your forefather. Not Jefferson and Jackson and Washington. It's Abraham, Yishak, and Yaakov. And that's Ephesians 4. 17, 18. I took time to quote that for you. I did that. Because see, we are not to mix the traditions of pagan deities with the worship of Yahushua. And that's in Debrim, chapter 12, 3 through 5. Also chapter 12, 28 through 32. Also chapter 13, 1 through 17. I'm going to read it again because I want you to study it because I'm not going to go long in this message further. Debrim, Deuteronomy 12, 3 through 5. Chapter 12, 28 through 32, and chapter 13, 1 through 17. He will not tolerate us to call on pagan deities and mix it with his worship. That's why those emissaries, Yeshiao, Yerbiahu, and all those men, Melikai, they had to leave the temple because they were mixing words and thanking Elohim with the name of L-O-R-D or Baal. And he's saying, they can't tolerate that stuff. I had enough. I can't be around. It grieves you. It quenches you. Because see, if you have the Ruach Kadosh, you have the ability to say, you know what? I can't be around. I want to be Kodeshi, and I'm leaving. Now, let me ask you a question as we're coming to a, a, a peak in this message. How many of you have seen, have you ever seen people blaspheme the Holy Spirit? The word Holy Spirit? Are they dead? Have you ever seen when people say G-O-D damn? Are they dead? No. Why? They're not blasphemy the Ruach Kadosh. They're blasphemy the Holy Spirit. A different spirit. Which I'm going to show you a picture. She's got an image. She's got a look. Are you hearing me? A deities have an image. It's an image of jealousy to the Father. All those images. Okay? Ghost. Oh, when I show you about ghosts, you're going to make yourself sick. It's going, to, it's going to gross you out what ghost is. Right? We don't supposed to call them. We don't supposed to ask for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. I renounce those things in Yahushua's name. We don't supposed to ask for those things. You ask for that, you're asking for a Greek deity. And I'm going to show you that. It's actually dramatic now. Okay, because it used to be spirit to, and then they, 98 times they replaced in different places the word spirit with the ghost, and it doesn't even match the Greek, okay, especially the Hebrew. So now, 
I never seen anybody die yet. B.B. King got a movie, got a song out. I mean, he's been playing that song. He, I mean, he's been playing that album over and over. Everybody's playing that. They're taking G.O.D. and then Rolling Stones got a G.O.D. damn song too. They're not dead, all of them yet. They live ripe old age and covetousness of perversion. Because you know where they were damning? They're actually damning the Nephilim. They're actually damning the G.O.D. son, D.O.D. of Germany. They're actually damning what you can damn. <laughs> Are you hearing me? They're not damning Elohim. They're not. I thank the Father they didn't know His real name. I thank the Father they didn't know how to blast me the Ruach Kadosh. Are you hearing me? I thank the Father they didn't know how to do it. They're using false names and pagan deities. Okay? They might be blaspheming the false deities, but they're not blaspheming Yahuwah or Elohim. Alright. Let me share some things now. I gave you the bad side of the picture. How many want the good side? Yeah. You want the good side? Okay. The word holy wasn't put in any any. Catholic translation in the Latin Vulgate until the year 1100. It didn't exist to the year 1100. You hear that? And it was Hall, H A L or H A I L in the Anglo Saxon versions. Mr. Wycliffe, the Reformation ex priest, put it in his Reformation scriptures in 1382. Look it up if you're watching by, by stream. Okay? It is holy. It's a, it's a spirit. Saint is a very paganistic deity. Okay? It's a recent, very recent word added in. But let's look at some good stuff for a minute. Here's what you can ask for. You can ask for the Ruach Kadosh. You can ask for His set-apart, set-apart Ruach. You can ask for Him to fill you up with His fruit. But you've got to change the words of the fruit. That's another message. I'm not going to do that today. Are you hearing me? You've got to change the, some of the words in the fruit. Because some of those words are French and they're Latin and, La and Greek. Okay? So you've got to change it to good clean languages to ask Him. How many of you know the Father is not going to give you a serpent or a snake or poison? So if we've been asking for the fruit of the Ruach Kadosh in the name of the HG and reading out that list and three of those words are paganistic, He's not going to give you that. Because he, know, he knows what's right for you. Are you hearing me out there? Okay. You can ask for the spirit of prudence that brings revelation and knowledge. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. You can ask from the Ruach Kadosh the gifts of the Ruach Kadosh. That's another message in the future. I'm not going to go that way now. But it's in Corinthians, Aleph, chapter 12, 4 through 9. Okay? How about a renewed and right spirit? Tell him, Psalms 51, 10. How about a humble spirit? You can ask for a humble spirit. You go on your knees and say, Father, I want a humble and meek spirit. And Yeshiahu 57, 15. That's Isaiah. How about the spirit of the Messiah? You can ask for the anointing of the of Ruha of, your, of the Mashiach. Romine 8, 9. How about a fervent spirit? Romans. Romine chapter 12, verse 11. How about you feel, you feel abandoned? You feel abandoned? You didn't have a father, you didn't have a mother, or you had lost members of your family, or you're growing up in a house with, that's not your real father, real mother. You can ask for a spirit or a Ruha of adoption. You want to be adopted? Swear into the house of Israel. He'll adopt you and love you. Romeo chapter 8, verse 15. A meekness spirit. Corinthians 4, 21. Bet. How about emonah, belief spirit? Right? Emonah, ruha of Corinthians. Bet. 4, 13. Now here's a pagan word. It's, it's the sanctification spirit. Sancti is Latin. It's Catholic. Okay? And it's dealing with the a little, another little thing out there, okay? We're not going to get into it today. But the correct word, and there's even a good Greek word for it, but they don't use it, and it's supposed to be a purifier, purification of Ruha. You can ask the Ruha to purify you and cleanse you. You can ask Him to change you. And you can go to this scripture in Hebra, in Dream, Hebrews. Um, you see, where is it at? Oh, it's Hazon. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't write down the verse. Apologize, but it's Hebrew word 2893. And the Hebrew word for purification is ta'oah. Okay? Same as someone asking to be separated as a kohan. How about this, the spirit of nabi or nabiyah? We're not using the word prophets, prophets and prophetess. The spirit of, we can ask for the ruah of a nabi. Hosan, 
Revelations 19.10 How about the Ruah of Yahuwah? Forty something times specifically it says, And the Ruah of Yahuwah came upon him and he spoke the word. I want the Ruah of Yahuwah. I want His Ruah of Elohim. I want His Ruah, which is called the Ruah Kadosh. Because somebody prays Him out there. You can go to Safatim, chapter 3, verse 10. Also in Judges 6, 34, 13, 25, 14, 6, verse 19. On and on and on and on. There's so many verses, 45 times. The, the Ruah of Yahuwah. Say it with me. The Ruah of Yahuwah. I mean, it even sounds better. It sounds like his, his, a, a gentle, loving kiss from Yahuwah. The Ruah of Yahuwah. The Ruah of Elohim. It's mentioned 22 times. could be upon you. The, the gifts of, Yah, of the Ruah Kadosh. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 13. You have to change some of the words again. The fruit of of the Ruach Kadosh, Galatians 5.22. So you can ask for these specific links. You can request them. He would grant it on you. And you're not going to get a serpent or snake or He's not going to hold back His prayer or answer from you because you're asking Him in the right language. You're asking Him in the right thing. Okay? There's people going around today, they're worse off than they've ever been in Christianity. Friends call, I hear them, I hear them in the background of phone calls of others. I don't know what's wrong with my life. I must have everything's messing up. And I said, well, we've been trying to get you with you. We're trying to get you out of that, that spirit. And you're not leaving it. You don't listen. You don't stop what you're doing. And you continue to reap the harvest of that spirit of rebellion. Now, the word 11 times is used two times in Hebrew for the word ghost in the Tanakh, what they call the Old Covenant. The Hebrew word is 1478 and it's gaba, to breathe out, to expire. Ghost is the same word when Abraham, Abram gave up the ghost, Ishmael gave up the ghost, Isaac gave up the ghost, Jacob gave up the ghost, and etc. And et it's the same word. It's, a, it's an exiled spirit. Of course, the spirit of Yahuwah breathed in life in the womb of our parents, then we were conceived. But it is exile now. Now when a spirit comes out of the body, guess what it has? It has all the elements. It has the education, the knowledge, the spirituality, everything in it. That's a ghost. Okay? And then it says, it also another word is nafesh in 53.10. And that's in Yeremiah 15, 15, chapter 15, verse 9. Now let's look at the word where they put in H-O-L-Y ghost 98 times they pancake this word on the Greek word 4151 it's pin it's pin a current of air and it doesn't say a current of air coming from the Ruach Kadosh. it is a current of air from a human rational soul angel demon serpent superhuman that is the Greek word 4151 if you're watching by the screen. Don't turn it off. Look it up. G4150. That's what the word spirit is and that's where the word ghost is. It's an exile air out of a human being. It is not the Ruah of Yahuwah. It's not the same. It's a very watered down word. The Greeks don't know how to... They don't know how to translate the word of the Ruah and place it into a kind word all they knew was spirit or ghost in King James Version. You got that? Now, ghost in Job 11, 20, uh, 53, 15 is breathing a creature, a nefesh, an animal, bodily, mental, appetite, beast, a creature, a ghost, a greedy heart person. That's in the book of Job. Okay? So this is, this is the type of spirit. Now I'm going to show you as we close and then we're going to pray because we're almost done. Okay? And Yahushua's name, we command pain to leave in Yeshua's name. Leave that neck right now from you. Let the Ruah of Yahuwah, of the Ruah Kadosh, come upon you like liquid oil and saturate your back like a, like a tallit, like a mantle. Let liquid come and the pain must go in Yahushua's name now. Praise Yahuwah. Now, 
All right, now, this is what Kimberly did for us. Okay? Now, look at this. And this is, I'm only, I got five things, but I'm only going to read one to show you a picture. Kodesh and Kadosh in Hebrew is to set apart for a special purpose. Can you say Kodesh? You're singing it. You're saying Ruach Kodosh. You're singing Kodesh. You're singing the Kodesh songs with Tina in Hebrew. Okay? One letter, Q-A-D, right? One letter, Q-E-D-E-S-H, is a male or female prostitute. It goes from set apart clean to unclean. One letter. That is crazy, man. So don't write it wrong. All right? Sanctus. Latin. That's where you get your sancti. Latin. Holy. Saint. Hymn. Sacred. Divine. Also sacred is from the Latin sacra, sacrum. Referring to the G.O.D.s of everything in their power. Mighty ones. Holy in Old English dates back to the 11th century from H.A.L. Pronounced hail. Meaning whole. Now, there's a good word for it, whole, like somebody's healed, but it has nothing to do with the Ruach Kadosh. Okay? Now, 11th century. Go like this. Oh, my goodness. How did it get in there? It got in there in the 11th century through the Latin Vulgate. They called the Latin Vulgate the Catholic translation Vulgate because it was called the Latin Vulgar language. That's what it was called. Vulgate means vulgar. And they were speaking that vulgar language. It's crazy. Alright? So now here we go. Main article, Helech. The word sacred descends from the Latin sacrum, which referred to the DODs of everything in their power and to saceros priests, sacrum, set apart. It was generally conceived... I, I don't know how that was spelled. Was it spa, spiritually? Or spatially? Right there. Because you typed it. Spatially? Spatially, okay, as referring to the area around the temple. Now we don't use the word temple; we use heckle. Temple is a pagan deity place. Okay, the English word hollow dates back holy to at least 11th century in Old English haleg, and the adjective derived from H A L meaning whole. It is also used in the meaning of un, uh, uninjured, sound, healthy, entire, complete. The Scottish H A L E health, happiness, whole and we know what happy is, that's another deity, is the most complete modern form of the Old English root. The modern word health is also derived from the Old English H-A-L as wholesome holiness may be taken to indicate a state of the religious completeness of the perfection. The word holy in its modern form appears in the Wycliffe's translation. Wycliffe, what did you do in 1382? <laughs> okay? 1382, when it really got into the Reformation Scriptures. It is non-special context. A term only is used as a more, more general way. Now look at this. Heleg, German, Dutch, derived from Hail, who was a Saxon deity. Hagios, like Agos, or Hagoas, Hagios, excuse me. Note here what the Greek lexicon reveals on the word origin. It means awful thing. Awful thing. You're going to call your Messiah's Ruach? Awful thing? Hello? Okay? The origin of the word holy by John uh, uh, G. Jobs Dictionary Mythology Folklore and Symbols page 781. I'm reading it for your sake of the ones that are listening by stream. That's uh, Jobs Dictionary Mythology Folklore and Symbols page 781. Excuse me. Reveals it derives from the divinely honored sun. S-U-N. Sun worship. We have removed the language of sun worshiper, worship for our lips and language. We've got to remove it. I can click Hindu Holly. I can go down here and click this YouTube thing and you will not believe. I'm Thank you for sending that. That's great. Showing them worshiping happy, holy, holy in India. You see, the Hindus use the same words. They use the word holy just like witchcraft, just like the Catholics, just like the Greeks, just like other religions. They use the word priest. They use the word holy man. Okay? 
said a Kodoshi person, they use all these pagan words. It's universal words. Why is it universal? Because the Jesuit priests, when they're going around conquering for the Catholics, the Roman, uh, Roman Catholic Apostolic Church, they were going around and planting seeds of words. So we are speaking seeds of words that have been planted to change our DNA, to change our point of perspective of worship. Okay? And, and also they use the word aurolia, and that's the aurora, the hollow, the halo, because they, they put the halo around their head. They put this little hat. When you graduate, they put a little square one like a mason hat, which is dealing with degrees of knowledge of the masons. Okay? They try to give you a black hollow. Somebody wore a white hollow when she did her graduation. <laughs> All right. Watching my stream or hearing my DVD, a CD, and watching my DVD. And this message, the Amunah, the belief of the understanding of the Torah, of the Tanakh, of the, of the whole word, of the covenant, of grafted in, is upon you. And you believe, and you understand. you got to realize, you can't say, Oh, it's only words, dude. That's long ago. No, there are images with a name, and the name has an images, and they're a place, they're a place and time of principalities. And whenever people, it says, it says in the word, it actually says in... Let's see. In in Second Chronicles or Dibri Hayamin Bet eleven fifteen and also Telehim one oh six thirty six through thirty eight. Them that worship and sacrifice to image idols sacrifice to demons. It says that in those scriptures. So people make an image because there's a demon behind it. The demon will give you a picture and an image how to make the image. Okay? So people go around and they now with a false image and say, Oh, let me take a picture with your long hair and beard. You look like a J-man. Oh, let me take the cigarette out of my mouth. Thank you for the compliment. You know what I mean? And then they, they take these, these, these actors or these people that are posers and they take a picture and dress them in a Greek outfit. Oh, he looks like the J-man. No, those are images of a false image of Yahushua. It looks like the J-man, all right. It looks like the Jesuit man, the Latin guy from Pope Borgia. Okay? It does not look like the Hebrew man. All right? And I thank the Father there's no images we have. So we, people start making images of Yahushua. Are you hearing me? So, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to go ahead and we're going to pray. And I want you to understand this. We're going to ask, I'm going to ask forgiveness. You can participate with me. You have the freedom of choice. You can go back home. And continue to write your stuff and read your stuff and say those words. You continue to sing your songs and do whatever you're going to do at home and whatever you do in your house and writing or fe- and say G O D B L E S S in German, speaking two German words to your friends on on your texts and your Facebook. You can continue on, but we and this house we're going to serve Yahuwah. Are you hearing me? You got to say that with me. Me and my house. We will serve Yahuwah. Okay, so I'm going to ask forgiveness. If you want to join me, ask forgiveness. And then we're going to renounce this spirit. you got to realize, I was up here weeping when he showed me this. I've been asking for the Holy Ghost. You've been dead before. We all did. We would never ask for those other spirits if you're watching by street. We would never ask for them, but we have been asking for pagan deities, double whammer, human spirit to possess us in the name of H-O-L-Y. Okay? So we're going to renounce it. We want everything out that the Ruach Kadosh can fill us up. We want Him to occupy this vessel and fill it up. Are you hearing me? We don't want no other spirit in us but the Ruach Kadosh of Yahuwah. So join me if you wish. And you're watching or listening by CD. Father... Forgive me. Wash me clean. Through the blood of my Hebrew Messiah, Yahushua. I'm a baby learning how to talk. I'm learning all over again. And I know it's innocent blood. I know it's innocent. Because I didn't know better. I learned these lies from my forefathers. But, be, but I'm not going to make it an excuse and continue on. Forgive me, Father. Forgive me, Father. Wash me clean through the blood of my Messiah, Yahushua, right now. And I command every not right spirit to lead me now in Yahushua's name. 
Every spirit on that list that I practiced as a child growing up, every spirit I still practice and I'm not aware of, I ask you to quicken me and help me to repent and get it out like an old rag in Yeshua's name. I ask you to forgive me and wash me clean and restore, say restore, a blushing conscience to be aware of what I speak out of my mouth in Yeshua's name. Now, Father, I want the Ruha HaKadosh. I want your real Ruha HaKadosh. I want the Ruha of Yahuwah to come upon me. I want the Ruha of Yahuwah to come upon me, to take over my life, to take over my mind, to take over my inner being, to take over my thoughts, to take over my language. In Yahushua's name, I want the Ruha HaKadosh. I want this immersion even now in Yahushua's name. Fill us with your Ruach Kadosh. In Yahushua's name. Amen. 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 If you said the prayer with me and you really meant it, then you're cleansed. And you confessed it. And if you didn't say it because you're, you're still walking the border, then I understand. You don't want to make a commitment with the Ruach Kadosh and then go contaminate your heckle. You don't want to do that. I respect you if you didn't say the prayer. You're going to go on your own and wait to the right timing. I respect that. Okay? Because you don't want to play with this. Christianity plays games to put you on a list and make you a member. We're not trying to put you in a danger. Are you hearing me? In Yeshua's name. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We Baruch, Hashem, Yahuwah, Elohim, the people of watching by the streams. We thank you that they have tuned in. We ask you, Father, to to Baruch them and Berakah them and prosper them and give them favor in Yahushua's name. Amen.